Okay, so here we have a classic problem, and there are two cases. There's a block of ice, or whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. It's a block that's sliding down a frictionless plane. Um, and so this, this plane has a height h and an angle theta, uh, and so the question, it's going to slide down to the bottom and get down to the bottom. Now, over here, I have a cylinder, and let's say it has, this has a mass m, this has a mass m and a radius r and it's going to roll down the incline. Same, it's the same mass, the same height, everything's the same. And the question is, which one is going to get to the bottom first? And I'm going to do this two ways. So I'm gonna make two videos. So the first video, I'm going to use work energy, and I'm going to describe, calculate the speed at the bottom and calculate the acceleration for both of these. And then I'll do it again using forces and torque. So let's start with the simple one, the block on the plane. So here is my, my block. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the forces on it even though I don't explicitly need that. So here I have um, the gravitational force, mg. I have the normal force, n. And that's it, there's no friction. Now it's going to be going down here. And the first thing I wanna do is find out how fast it is at the bottom. So we'll call this position one and this position two. And right away, your alarm should go off saying, hey, use work energy. Also, because I said, hey, I'm gonna use work energy. That was the biggest hint right there. The other hint is because I don't really care about time. I just care about the speed at two different positions. So that says use the work is the change in energy. Now to do that, the first thing I need to do is describe my system. In this case, it's gonna be the block plus the earth. And so that means that the gravitational force is an interaction between the block and the earth and it does not do work. The normal force right here also does no work because work is F delta R cosine theta. And the angle between the displacement and N is 90 degrees. And so the cosine 90 is zero, so this, is, this does no work. So the no work done on the system so that means it's going to be the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy. Because I'm including the Earth in my system, I can have a gravitational potential energy. So kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. Gravitational potential is mgy. So I need to pick my y value of zero. I'm going to pick down here. y equals zero. So up here, it has no kinetic energy. It starts from rest. And down here, it has no gravitational potential energy because I picked it that way. So that means I get no work done, zero, is equal to the final kinetic energy, one-half mv2 squared, and that's what I want to find. I want to find v2, minus one-half m0 squared. That's the initial kinetic energy. Plus the final potential energy, mg0, minus the initial potential, mg h. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So the only two terms that are not zero are these two. So I can add mgh to both sides. I get mgh equals one-half mv2 squared. The masses cancel. v2 equals the square root of 2gh. Nothing new there. Okay. And in fact, that's the same speed you would get if it ended up at the bottom. And you, or if you dropped it straight down. Now, I did say I wanted the acceleration. So um, there's a couple ways we could do this. Let's first say this is the distance s. Um, yeah, because you know I could just find the component of gravity in the direction. I and I and and I know that I could say this is my x direction. F net x equals m a x. And the net force in the x direction is this component of the gravitational force. If this is the angle theta, this is also theta. So I get mg sine theta equals max. So ax is g sine theta. Now I, I don't I'm not gonna be able to do that for this other case. So let's do it another way. Let's say this. I'm gonna run out of room. Let me just change paper. I'm going to say this. 
uh, the acceleration in the x direction is the change in velocity over the change in time. And so that's going to be the final velocity, v2, minus the initial velocity over the change in time. But I don't know the time. I don't know how long it took. But I do know this. V average is equal to the change in, actually this is, yeah, this is x, change in x over the change in time. It's also equal to V1 plus V2 over 2. So from this, I can solve for delta t. And actually, V1 is 0, right? It started from rest. So I can solve this for delta t. I get delta t equals, um, let's see, so I'm going to multiply both sides by delta t and divide by V2. So I get delta x2 over V2. I, I probably shouldn't do that because I skipped a step. Okay, let's see. If I multiply both sides by delta t, that comes up here. I multiply both sides by 2. Okay, yeah. That's good. And this is going to be meters divided by meters per second. Okay, so that's good. So that's my delta t. Now I can plug that in up here and I get ax equals delta x. No. A, <laughs> ax equals delta v, which is going to be v2, divided by delta t, which is going to be v2 over 2 delta x. I feel like that's overly complicated, but let's just check. Meters squared per second squared. Okay, it has the right units. Okay, so uh, one half v2 squared over delta x. Now, delta x is going to be equal to, if I go back to my triangle over here, this is h and this is theta, then this is going to be uh, delta x. So sine of theta is going to be h over delta x. So delta x is h over sine theta. I know it's really complicated, but just hold on with me. So if I put that in over here, I get ax equals 1 half v2 squared over h times sine theta. But wait, v2 from before is the square root of 2gh. So if I put that in over here, I get ax equals 1 half times 2gh times sine of theta, all of that over h. Cancel, cancel, g sine theta. Boom, got it. I know that was long, but I wanted to do that because I'm not going to be able to exactly do the same thing with, uh, with the rolling stones. The rolling stone, get it? Okay. Now let's do the rolling stone. It's the same problem. And I'm still going to use my work energy. I'm still going to have the system of the, the di I'll call it a disk because it's easier to spell, plus the earth. And there's no work done on it. Let's draw the forces because look, I have the gravitational force, mg8. No, I was thinking, mg. I have the normal force, n. Now, actually, the force of friction, does that do work? There is a frictional force there. Okay, you can't really do work done by friction. I'll tell you that right now. It's really com complicated. But in this case, um, I, I can't, if I do this, zero work, change in kinetic translational plus change in kinetic rotational plus change in gravitational potential energy, I can do that. But I can't do a change in kinetic rotational energy and do work done by friction. Okay. It's, I just realized how complicated it is right now, but that's fine. So in this case, I have the rotational kinetic energy is one half I omega squared. Now, for a disk, I is one half m r squared. And if it's rolling, omega is equal to v over r. So that means that the rotational kinetic energy of the disk is going to be one half times one half m r squared times this square, which is v squared over r squared. So the rotational kinetic energy of the disk is one fourth m v squared. 
So over here I get uh, the work energy is going to be 0 equals kr2, I'm sorry, t2, minus kt1 plus kr2 minus kr1 plus u2 minus u1. Okay, so some of these are 0. I'm going to call this y equals 0 again. So that's 0, that's 0, that's 0. 0 equals 1 half mv2 squared plus 1 fourth mv2 squared minus mgh. And I can combine these two together. This is going to be 2 fourths plus 1 fourth, so I get 0 equals 3 fourths mv2 squared minus mgh. Now I can add mgh to both sides and solve for v2. I get v2 equals the square root of 4 thirds gh. And compare that to before I got v2 was the square root of 2gh. So this is smaller than that. So it's going to, the block will get there first. Now one more thing. What about the acceleration? Okay, so what up here still works? This, this works. This still works. But now I can put in a different expression for the final velocity. Because the same thing applies. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so I can say A is uh, 1 half, which you can't see, V2 squared over H sine theta. So now the only thing different is I have that in there, so I get 1 half times 4 thirds times gh sine theta over h. So this gives me 2 thirds g sine theta. Now compare that to the previous one of g sine theta, so the acceleration is lower. Okay, so we won. That took a little bit longer than I wanted. Okay, so I'm going to read, I'm going to do this problem again. But this time, I'm not going to use work energy. I'm going to use the momentum principle and the angular momentum principle. I'll see you there.